Hey guys, today I'm coming to you from my onesie. I hope that doesn't bother you. It's cold here. It's snowing. It's the evening. I just want to be warm. So I'm wearing this onesie. If it does bother you, then you might not want to watch a few videos because I've already filmed two while wearing it. Sorry. But hopefully you're not here for what I wear or what I look like and you're just here for the geckos. Today I want to talk about healing injuries and geckos, specifically Sam and Gilly, who are the only geckos who have ever really given me trouble with injury. If you didn't know, Sam and Gilly are two sisters that have severe enigma syndrome. I got them in July of 2016, and ever since, they have had the exact same severity of syndrome. I've just become better at dealing with it and learning how to help them. If you don't know what Enigma Syndrome is, I'll include a link down below to a video I made about Enigma Syndrome where you can see some clips of Sam and Gilly and how they move and how they interact with me and the world around them with their syndrome. Throughout the year and a half that I've had them, they have needed assisted shed every single time that they've shed. Sometimes it's very minor, it's just a toe tip or two. Other times it's severe where it's like the latter half of their tail and their head and all four of their feet and their underbelly. And it just depends, honestly. Like, they always have a humid hide they can use. I also spray down their enclosure every couple days to keep the humidity up to try and help them shed. They're very sensitive about sensory stimulation. So, soaking them in water or having them touch water is very stressful to them. When I first got Sam and Gilly, they both had stuck shed on their toes. And to try and help remove the stuck shed, I put them in a small amount of water, probably like this much, and they both death rolled. In fact, Gilly death rolled to the point of having a seizure, and I had never seen an animal have a seizure before in front of me. It was truly horrifying, but like mama strength kicked in and I was very calm about it, but like when I talk about it now, it's very stressful. So after she had her seizure, I was extremely hesitant to put them in water for a long period of time, but that's what they needed and that's where I made a mistake. Because while I was able to get all of the stuck shit off of Gilly's toes, I was not able to get them all off of Sam's toes in time. Sam lost the very tip of one toe and she lost half of another toe because the stuck shed had cut off her blood circulation to her toe and had killed it. And basically the toe turns to a scab and falls off and it's horrible and I cried for days. I was so upset that I had let that happen. But it's nothing I had ever been familiar with. In fact, Eddard and Marcella, my two enigmas I had before Sam and Gilly, both shed completely on their own. I think I might have had Merlin before them too and he shed completely on his own too and still does. They really taught me the severity of enigma syndrome really fast because before them, the only type of severity I had seen was Eddard doing some head tilts and needing to be hand fed. But Sam and Gilly really brought a new meaning to special needs to me. A year and a half later, I have learned to not let stuck shed stay on their feet. Even if they start death rolling in the water, it needs to come off. I have learned that it's easier to remove their stuck shed like immediately. I don't have to put them in water. I just have to spray some water on their feet, which they still hate. And I have to gently rub the shed off of their toes and off of their tail tips with my fingertips. And they hate it. They still death roll sometimes, but it's much easier than in the beginning. It's a learning experience. Even if you have geckos that are completely healthy, it's a learning experience. So I want to talk about something that happened recently with Sam. Sam has still always had trouble shedding, so has Gilly, but Sam has been worse. And recently she went through a shed and I went to remove stuck shed from her tail, which came off, but she was very upset about it. I could see that it was bothering her. And I was like, okay, sometimes she just naturally is bothered by the fact that I'm touching her because like I said, sensory stimulation is very difficult for them to handle with their condition. And so I thought nothing of it, but after I was done taking the shed off the normal way that I do, which is safe by just applying water to her tail and then rubbing the shed off lightly, I noticed that her tail was really red underneath and I was like, that's interesting. I've never seen that before with her. It was red, there wasn't any open wounds, it wasn't an injury, it was just red. I put some Neosporin on it because I wasn't sure what was going on. And then the next day I came back to it and I decided to soak her in some water. And of course, she death rolled and death rolled. And then finally she became stiff with her eyes closed, almost catatonic. And that's what I've noticed after they become so stressed, they just like kind of shut down and they stop moving and close their eyes. And it's really sad, but it is what it is. So she did that and I noticed that her tail skin started to float on the water surface. And I was like, she has another layer of shed. I was like, that can't be. I literally catch her after every shed. There's no way. So I pulled on it and I was like, it feels just like shed. It feels a little bit more rubbery. And I was like, that could be because the Neosporum, which is kind of waxy, and when you put it on a gecko's tail, it kind of like shines a little bit because it's a waxy substance. And so I was like, okay, maybe that's why. 
but I think now that it might have been tissue. And I don't know why her tissue was lifting off of her tail. I don't know. She didn't have an injury prior to shedding. I didn't notice anything. And I handle them every time that I feed them, which is every two or three days. So I was pretty surprised when her skin was basically just like falling off in the water. So I looked at it. I thought it was stuck shed. I peeled it off up until the very tip of her tail where it wouldn't come off. And so I just had to take off what I could and leave what I had to and it was red underneath still and I was like come on so after that I put a bunch of neosporin on it and I just let her be throughout the two-week period before her next shed I had been applying neosporin like every other day or so and then at her next shed she lost most of the scab except the portion at the top now I'm gonna show some pictures if you don't want to see a gecko injury it's nothing graphic at all I promise there's no blood or anything like that um, but if you don't want to see it, just skip ahead. It'll just be a few seconds. But I'm going to show the shed on her tail before, and then I'm going to show her the redness after, and then I'm going to show after I peeled off the skin, and then I'm going to show that little piece that was left at the top, and then I'm going to show after her scab fell off. It's a series of photos that I took, and I also documented this on Instagram, so you may have already seen this. Here you can see Sam with the stuck shed on her tail. Here's what Sam's tail looked like immediately after removing the shed, and you can see that redness I was talking about. Here's what her tail looked like after I removed the rubbery piece of shed or tissue. As you can see, there's still tissue stuck to the top of the tail. I believe this was the worst part of the whole injury because it caused her to drop the very tip of her tail. Here's a scab that formed on the underside of her tail after I took off the rubbery tissue. As you can see, it was pretty large. So like I said, after her first shed, half of the scab fell off, but this picture here is of the top shed where the tip of her tail is. This is what her tail tip looked like immediately after the scab fell off. And here is what her tail looks like today. It is obviously still in the process of healing, but it looks really good. I'd also like to talk about Benjen, who's one of my enigmas for a second. As you can see by this picture, he has a scar that is very similar to what Sam's scab looked like, and he's also missing the tip of his tail. So I wonder if before I got him, he had a very similar injury. It's worth noting that enigmas are notorious for losing the tips of their toes and tails. In fact, I'm going to show you some pictures here of my geckos who came to me with enigma syndrome and without their tail tips. This here is Shireen, and she has severe enigma syndrome, and as you can see, she is missing quite a large chunk out of the tip of her tail. This is Melisandre, and it's difficult to see due to the lighting and the quality of the photo, but she is missing quite a large tip of her tail as well. This is Eddard's tail, and as you can see, the tip is blunt and not tapered off, so you know he's missing just the tiniest amount, just like Sam. And the same goes for Merlin, who is missing a small portion of the tip of his tail as well. For a good reference, this is Gilly, who is Sam's sister, and she also has a nimbus syndrome, but she is not missing the tip of her tail. As you can see, her tail finally thins out and tapers to a point. I was super pleased to see that she had fresh skin and that she was healing well. She hadn't been picky about eating. She was really great. You hardly even tell she was injured. And so it all turned out well. But I accept complete and total responsibility for this. I don't really know why it happened. I've taken some extra precautions in their enclosure to make sure that nothing in there caused the problems. But I really don't know how to avoid it. it. They've been with me for a year and a half and this has never happened, so I'm not really sure what it was. But I know that it was my fault and I probably made it worse by picking out what I thought was that stuck shed that just peeled right off, but that was probably tissue. I don't know why it was peeling off like that, but it was. There's always something more to learn. Like, I'm not perfect. I want you all to know that I'm not perfect whatsoever. My experience with Sam's injuries I want you to be able to learn from, like, because I'm completely just like you. I'm experiencing gecko keeping the same way everyone else is, one step at a time. I also want to quickly talk about other injuries that Sam and Gilly have had due to shedding. Basically, Sam and Gilly, like, while shedding, their faces couldn't get the stuck shit off their faces and rub their faces so hard against things that they would cause abrasions. And I have seen this in geckos that are not Enigma, so it's definitely not strictly to geckos that have special needs. And neither is toes being cut off by circulation of shed or anything like that. That can happen to normal geckos as well. But I digress. I just want you to know that Sam and Gilly have given me some problems in terms of injuries. And if it comes to simple injuries just like that, it's always a good idea to use Neosporin. I hope that you aren't disappointed at all that my geckos are not 100% like perfect. <laughs> um, they definitely have their problems, Sam and Gilly especially. And I, of course, always accept full responsibility for them and any injuries that they may have. But I also am 
fully responsible in taking care of that and so she is healed completely I'm so glad to share that and I wanted this to be shown on YouTube as well because I talked about it on my Instagram and gave updates there but if you don't follow on Instagram then you didn't see and I also thought this was a great teachable moment for people who have never had their gecko had an injury or who have and didn't know what to do the Neosporin works amazing it's great it's it's so easy to apply and it heals things so fast like it's wondrous. I hope that you found this video insightful and I hope that you enjoyed, although it's not like really a great topic, <laughs> gecko injuries. If you aren't and you'd like to be, please subscribe. If you leave a comment down below, I will definitely get back to you. If you check out the links below, you'll find a link to our Facebook, our Twitter, and our Instagram. You'll also find a donation link for my special needs animals such as Sam and Gilly. And you'll also find an email that you can contact me at if you don't want to leave a comment on social media or if you have any other inquiry. But with all that said, I will see you next time and most likely not in a onesie. Bye!